When Tony Ndungu founded Nylab, one of Kenya's leading startup incubators, he wasn't looking for handouts, recognition, or fame. It was born out of a necessity to be the change he wanted to see in Kenya. The inspiration for starting the Nylab was emptiness. There's been a recurring conversation around unemployment and young people. And there's always been this thing of waiting for the government to solve the problem, or waiting for somebody external to come and fix it. Nylab was born as the first fiber optic cable that landed at the Kenyan coast opening up the country to the emerging opportunities for the tech world. And that was a fantastic uh, experience when we started. The idea, again, get ICT companies, accelerate them through a business development process, and you know, cough out a company at the end of the day. So far, Nylab has incubated over 70 startups and facilitated membership and investment for more than 400 others. It is also the continental partner for the $1 million African Netpreneur Prize by Jack Ma Foundation. Hubs are really good safe spaces when things are starting out. It's kind of like a nursery school. It's a very good place when kids are going to that level of literacy and numeracy, just trying to learn how to hold biro pens and colors and crayons and color and stuff like that. But then as the ecosystem grows, the hub's responsibilities change. Then it becomes more a place for mentorship, advice, a place for acquisitions from companies that have kind of scaled up, coming back and looking at what the space has. Uh, and also a place for frontier learning. And while incubation hubs like Nylab transform ideas into products and services, accelerators such as Growth Africa take the existing businesses to the next level. For us, it makes our work quite interesting as an accelerator because we want to produce companies that can create dignified and qualified jobs. And we know that for companies to grow, they need to work with partners and they also need to raise investment. So for us, when our companies get investment, that is a good sign for us that we are actually succeeding. When we see our companies participate with the large corporates as well, that is also um, a success story for us. Growth Africa, headquartered in Nairobi with a presence in Uganda, Zambia and Ethiopia, takes up entrepreneurs for a six-month program. To qualify, the business needs to have a product, been in existence for two years and generating up to $50,000 in revenues annually. But I think it's also just a changed mindset in how you think about your business, how you think about access to markets that your business can take advantage of, and really giving them that safe space where they can be vulnerable enough to talk about the challenges that they're facing in their business, but also giving them a platform to connect with people who can provide them the support that they need. The fertility of technology in Africa has seen a host of successful disruptive startups across the continent in a variety of fields from IT, FinTech, agricultural technology to renewable energy. Today you, have, you find that uh, there are more than 400 hubs across Africa. I think they play a key role in the growth of uh, the tech ecosystem uh, in Africa. Through interactions at hubs, entrepreneurs can spot fresh ideas to pursue or find a way to execute a generic idea. These VCs or angel investors seem to also use the hubs and these co-working spaces to hunt for pipeline of new business ventures that they're looking at investing in. It's one way of actually getting into a place and finding 10, 20, 30 startups that you can start having a conversation with. And with the attention of investors, partners and funders and the rest of the global technology industry directed towards Africa, there is opportunity for homegrown businesses to thrive. In an ideal world, every high school and university would need its own hub. And the top, top 10 jobs in the market right now globally, seven of them are pure technology jobs. That's where we're going.